How about we end the season now while the vibes are this good? You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. On today's show, we'll preview Tuesday's matchup between Nestor Cortez and Zach Gallen. We'll discuss the 1992 team briefly. I have a story about them because... Your New York Yankees are off to a 5-0 and start, and the last time they did that was 1992. So let's get into it. Or actually, before we get into it, hit that like button, subscribe, and uh, hit the bell so you know when our videos go up. So the Yankees win on, t- no, Monday. <laughs> they win on Monday night, 5-2. They start the year 5-0. and They have not done this since 1992. Not that 1992 was a great season. They finished 76 and 86. And as I said, I have a story about 1992, but we'll wait until segment two for that. This team feels different. This team feels different than 1992. 1992, the team was coming out of the doldrums of the very early 90s. 1991 were absolutely horrible, if you don't remember. This team, sure, they're coming off an 82 and 80 season, which was not good. And they didn't make the playoffs. And it was just the vibes were all off. The vibes are completely different. And I know it's only five games, but they're barking at each other. That's their thing now. They're having fun. And I know people will have a problem with the barking, but I'm loving it so far. I felt this vibe in spring training. But so far, five games into the regular season, it's carrying into the regular season. Again, it's only five games. And winning means that you'll have fun, uh, but some players have clearly changed their approach at the plate, which we'll talk about later in the segment. But again, it's only five games. Remember the Rays last season? They started off 13-0. and Not that they finished badly. They were a good team. They finished 99 and 63, but a hot start in March and April doesn't mean anything if you can't finish the year off strong. And obviously you can't keep up a pace like that all season, because if you could, the highest win total would be more like 130, 132 and not 116. So I just want everyone to temper their expectations right now. Is it fun that the Yankees are five and oh? Yes. Was it fun that they swept Houston? Yes, I'll mention that until the end of the season. But let's just all calm down. It's fun for now, but it's a long season. There's going to be ups. There's going to be downs. Right now, they're on the up. So let's talk about last night's game. Luis Heal, four and two-third innings, gave up one run on one hit, surrendered three walks. He struck out six, was firing that ball in there. He threw 84 pitches. Now, the four and two-third... Could be better. We'll talk about that in a bit, too. But he hit 99 and 100 on the gun. He actually had the top five speeds in the game, according to Baseball Savant. He hit 100 on the nose, 100.0 miles per hour. He also led all pitchers in the game with 10 swings and misses. He got eight off his four-seam fastball and two off his slider. It was a really solid first outing for Heal, who came back from Tommy John surgery. He impressed everyone in spring, got the call to be the fifth starter, and showed them why they made the right choice in making him the fifth starter. As for the offense, Anthony Volpe. First four-hit game of his career, a night after he sat with food poisoning. (laughs) He hit two singles and two doubles and uh, ran the base as well, also scored. And uh, yeah, it seems like they're new heroes. Not quite every night, but every series. You know, the heroes of the Houston series were clearly Juan Soto and Oswaldo Cabrera. And in Monday night's game, it was Heel, Volpe, Glaber got in on the action, Nick Birdie coming out of the bullpen and firing gas, and even to an extent, Luke Weaver 
who's been an unsung hero so far this season. We'll get more into that later in the episode. So who will be the hero on Tuesday night against the Diamondbacks? I would like to see Aaron Judge get things going. He's slowly starting to get things going. And as I said on yesterday's show, you know, he missed that time in spring training. So he's a little bit behind. And I think people forget that he started off 2022 pretty slow and then hit 62 home runs. So I keep saying it. I'm not worried about him. He's fine. Uh, in other news, Juan Soto was named the American League Player of the Week, even though the week was really only four days. But yeah. he batted 529, had a go-ahead homer and a go-ahead double in the Yankees' first four games. I like watching him play. I do. I enjoy it. I love watching how he gets pissy with the umps if they call a bad strike on him because he knows the strike zone really, really well. Um, and the umps know that he knows the strike zone. So I don't know why they're insisting on making bad calls against him. Um, I am directing this at Larry Vanover, who was the home plate umpire on Monday. Yes has a graphic that's a scouting report for the umps and it shows whether they're hitter friendly or pitcher friendly. In the first five games, two umps have been hitter friendly. James Hoy and Larry Vanover. And both of them have made atrocious calls against the hitters. James Hoy had two low strikes, one against Judge and one against Stanton. And what's funny about that was, and I think I mentioned this on Fridays, right? Because he, I think he did the first game of the season. He didn't call a low strike on Judge, which shocked me. And I think I said something about it on Twitter. I said, wow, you know, Judge has been in the league how many years and umps are finally not calling that low strike on him. And then later in the game, Hoy's strike zone expanded and he called a strike below Judge's knees. And then he did the same thing to Giancarlo Stanton. In Monday night's game, Vanover made a couple of calls that Judge, uh, excuse me, Zoto, Zoto, Soto did not agree with. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's just funny when he gets mad at the umps. He did it the other day in Houston, too, um, after he hit that go ahead single in the last game of the series, because I think the ump made a bad call on, on him in that at bat. And as he was running to first, he was kind of like, and I know some people don't like that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Juan Soto has changed this team. Just the addition of Juan Soto has changed this team for the better. And that's exciting. And yes, again, they will go through ups and downs because, hey, the Padres had Soto last year, along with Fernando Tatis Jr. and Manny Machado and a lineup and a team that people thought were going to do so much better. And they didn't. So again, we need to temper our expectations. But for right now, this is a fun team to watch. I'm enjoying it very much. In segment two, I'm going to tell a story about 1992, the last time the Yankees started off 5-0. and It's about a game I attended that I remember very well. But first, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button on our videos and hit the notification bell so you know when our videos go up. Also, reply to the pinned comment on our videos Monday through Thursday if you want your questions answered for Fan Mail Friday. We do it every week. Or you can join the Locked On Yankees Insiders Club. The link is in the description. You'll get texts from me, and you can text me questions or just comments as the game goes on. There's a 14-day free trial, and it's a lot of fun. So again, coming up next, a story about the 1992 team and some thoughts about how the starters have done so far. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewer experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening week for baseball or the college basketball tournaments, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free that includes all of us at locked on and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well 
Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. Welcome back. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And remember, you can catch every pitch of the Yankees' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SiriusXM app and search the word Yankees. I don't know what is going on with my nose right now, but it's very itchy. Okay. So let's go back to 1992, the last time the Yankees started 5-0. and I attended a game on August 18th, 1992, and I remember it very well, <laughs> which is crazy because it's almost 32 years ago. The Yankees were winning 6-5 going into the top of the ninth. And uh, Carney Lansford hit a three-run home run in the top of the ninth, and the Yankees lost 8-6. Now, the thing about this was we were sitting in left field, in the main level of left field, not right at the wall, but just past the walkway in the old stadium. Carney Lansford's home run landed in those seats by the wall. And you could see me in the crowd because I happened to be wearing a rainbow tie-dyed t-shirt. It's my favorite t-shirt that year. I wore it all the time. I remember what I wore that night. I wore that t-shirt and a white pair of shorts. And all the highlights of the game that showed that home run, you could see me. You just saw this blob of rainbow <laughs> in the crowd. Uh, we watched headline news when we got home, saw the highlights, ESPN everywhere. So anyway... Why am I telling you this? Because this team in 2024 is not the 1992 team. Now, to be fair, they're also not the 1927 team, which also began their season with an impressive 6-0-1 mark. I feel like 2024 is somewhere in the middle, maybe closer to 1927 than they are to 1992. Because as I said in segment one, 1992's team were 76 and 86 where 1927 is like the gold standard of Yankee teams. So I feel like 2024 is in the middle, but skewed toward 1927, if that makes sense. And like I mentioned in segment one, the Rays started off 2023 on fire. They won their first 13 games. They were 23 and five when April ended. Now, the thing about that was they had an easy schedule. They played against teams that in the previous season were under 500, at 500, not playoff teams, that kind of a thing. And they beat the teams that you're supposed to beat. I say this all the time. Good teams beat the teams you're supposed to beat. And then they occasionally beat the teams that, you know, maybe at the same level as them, right? Because they, they're they better than them. The Rays finished 99 and 63. That is nothing to sneeze at. That is a really good record. But with the start that they got off to, you know, people were talking about the 98 Yankees, the 2001 Mariners, the Cubs of 100, almost 20 years ago. That kind of start is unsustainable. And speaking of unsustainable, the Yankee starters, they need to last longer so the bullpen doesn't fizzle out at the end of the season. At this rate, the bullpen's going to fizzle out before the all-star break with the way the starters are gone so far. We're a full turn through the rotation. Nestor starts on Tuesday night. The Yankee starters need to go further than four or five innings. Stroman's the only one out of the five games that picked up a win for the Yankees, and he's the only one to pitch at least six innings. Luke Weaver leads the team in wins with two right now. And I know we're in a different era of pitching. Era. I always do that. A different era of pitching. And I don't want to sound like a curmudgeon, 
But what happened to the starters who lasted six, seven, or eight innings? Do they even exist anymore? Oh, wait, they do exist. Ronel Blanco of the Astros threw the season's first no-hitter on Monday night against the Blue Jays. So, yes, there are pitchers who can pitch six, seven, eight, nine innings. <laughs> and, guys, this is a message to the Blue Jays. Guys, the Yankees set this up perfectly for you. They marched into Houston, swept them in four games, Houston had their tails between their legs. You could have made it, you could have extended their misery and taken advantage of it. But no, instead you got embarrassed. Not only did you get no hit, you lost the game 10-0, and you had to have IKF pitch for you. Tisk tisk. So back to the rotation. Nestor goes tonight, Rodon in the finale against Arizona, which we will be uh, previewing on tomorrow's show. And then Stroman goes in the home opener. I'm not worried about Stroman. I'm worried about Rodon. I'm worried about Nestor. So I will be watching Nestor carefully tonight, like I did with Rodon on Friday. I will also be watching Rodon again on Wednesday to make sure that he's better than he was in his first start which wasn't terrible. It just wasn't long enough. That's the problem. Their starts aren't long enough. It's going to cause a problem with the bullpen. This is why the Yankees keep solidifying the bullpen and getting more pieces. And it's a really good bullpen. And it could be a, a great bullpen throughout the year if the starters don't wear them down. So this, I feel like this second turn through the rotation is a big test for the starters who didn't go at least sixth inning. I'm going to give Stroman some grace on Friday during the home opener because he's pitching in front of the home crowd. He's pitching for the team that he grew up liking. He's pitching against a former team, even though a lot of the guys that were on the team with him aren't there anymore in the Blue Jays. But still, I will give him a little bit of grace if he's a little hyped up for the home opener. But Nestor, Rodon, and Schmidt, those three, I'm going to look at the next time through the rotation. Heel, I'm not that worried about just because I feel it feels like the Yankees are being careful with him because he's coming back from Tommy John. The rest of them, no. You got to make it into the fifth and sixth inning, guys. <laughs> your bullpen will thank you in July and August if you guys can extend your starts just a little longer. <laughs> just a little longer. So coming up next, we'll be previewing game two of the series with the Diamondbacks. As I said, Nestor is starting and we will look at Zach Gallen as well. The sports calendar is loaded and FanDuel's making it even more exciting to get in on the action. Because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 you can use to bet the tournaments, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. You can bet on the men's Final Four, which set with Connecticut matched up against Alabama and the surprising NC State, who will be taking on Purdue. And uh, the girls... Unbelievable game on Monday night, huh? Between Iowa and LSU and Connecticut beating the number one seed, USC. That's pretty cool. If you want to bet on baseball, use the parlay builders to bet on hits, home runs, RBIs, and more. You can also bet on individual players to hit home runs. And of course, you can bet on games. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. 
And one more reminder, you can catch every pitch of the Yankees hometown broadcast with Sirius XM. Just download the Sirius XM app and search the word Yankees. I will do that from time to time. I listen to it on my device whose name I don't want to say. I listen to John and Susan. Okay, so previewing Tuesday's start, Nestor Cortez against Zach Gallen. Gallen pitched against the Rockies in his first start of the year, went five innings, gave up one run on three hits, two walks, three strikeouts. Cortez also pitched five innings, but they were bad then good, as I said the other day. Six of the first nine reached, and then he retired 12 of the last 13. So it was a tale of two games for Nestor Cortez. Who will show up on Tuesday? We'll find out. Five innings, four runs on five hits, two walks, and five strikeouts. Uh, now, some of the guys who weren't available on Monday night, who you didn't see come out of the bullpen, will probably be available for Tuesday in case Nestor does get into trouble because there was a reason Luke Weaver was given kind of a long leash because there were some guys who pitched too much <laughs> in the Houston series and they needed a break. So you might see some of those guys on Tuesday night if Nestor runs into some trouble, or even if Nestor just only pitches five innings again. So let's talk about the Yes Network. I love the Yes Network. Coney was on Monday's game with Michael Kay, and uh, it was great as usual. He made a reference to the Gap Band after Glaber hit a gapper. And uh, I always appreciate old music reference, musical references. But they're doing a game, a new game during the, the um, broadcast where they will put up an image and it'll show, you have to guess who the player is and it shows where they played, what years, all the logos for the teams. I think the other night was Aaron Boone, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but on Monday, it was Javi Vasquez. No offense to Javi Vasquez. It's not entirely his fault, but no one wants to be reminded of Javi Vasquez. We have PTSD from, I mean, really, from Javi Vasquez's two tenures with the Yankees. So I don't know who is behind this because I know a few people who work at Yes. I've, I've met a couple of them in person. So I don't know who is behind this, but don't put, you know, like don't put Jarrett Wright, don't put Kevin Brown, like people like that don't know. There are hundreds of people <laughs> you can put in this game. Put the Put the guys up that we want to remember, not the ones that make us cringe when we see their name on TV. That's just a thought I had. So don't do that again. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It is kind of a cool game, though, and it is interesting to see the trajectory of some of these guys' uh, careers. And it shows how many career hits they have, too, which is how I knew it was Boone, because there wasn't that many, even though he played. A while. I think he had a thousand. Well, he had over a thousand hits in his career, which is pretty good. I think it was like a thousand seventeen, if I'm not mistaken. And one last thing before I end the show. I would like to thank you for helping us reach six thousand subscribers on YouTube. We hit that number on Monday. I can't believe it. That's six thousand more than I ever expected when I started this job in 2018. Actually, in 2018, we didn't have YouTube. That didn't start till 2021. So it's an amazing accomplishment. You're all amazing and supportive. And I appreciate everything you do for me. I appreciate everyone who shows up in the chats when the videos premiere. I appreciate how nice you are, all the questions you ask for Fan Mail Friday. And I appreciate that you enjoy the job that I do. And I try to improve every time and you just make this job a dream for me. So I wanted to thank you for that. And in case you missed it, tomorrow's show is going to be going up around the same time, noon, because these late games are just too much for me. <laughs> because if I had stayed up to do the show, it probably wouldn't have gone up until at least three in the morning and I would have been delirious. So it's better if we do it this way. So Wednesday's show will be at noon. Thursday's show will be at the regular time, like right at midnight, early Thursday morning, because Wednesday's game is a 340 start. So I will be able to record the show, edit the show, get it up by midnight, and it'll be back to the regular schedule. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up about that. 
Um, but again, these Western time zone games are way too late for me. And I hope by the time the Yankees make it back to the West Coast, because they have a trip against the Padres, the Angels, and the Giants late May into early June, that I get on a better schedule with editing and it doesn't take me as long. So I have nearly two months to get that down. And if I do, then I'll get the shows up at night. But we'll see how that goes. So before we go, one more time, don't forget to join the Locked On Yankees Insiders Club. There's a link in the description below, and there's a 14-day free trial. You get texts from me. You can text me questions or comments. I text back and forth with the insiders during the games. It's fun. And speaking of that, leave your questions under the pinned comment for Fan Mail Friday. I've already taken screenshots of your questions under Monday's video. And if you join the Insiders Club, you will get top priority on Fan Mail Friday. But if you leave a question on YouTube, I will still read it if I can answer it. And one more time again before I end this, remember you can catch every pitch of the Yankees hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SiriusXM app and search the word Yankees and you can listen to John and Susan to your heart's content. So that's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Yankees. I'm Stacey Gonsoulias. Thank you for watching and I will see you tomorrow. Oh,